Today's uh, session is probably going to be necessarily quite brief, um, but I want to try and give you an overview of um, why providing accessible information is such an important thing to do. And also, it's something that is particularly, it, it's quite easy to do and very cost effective. Uh, why be inclusive, I think, is, is, a, good, is a good place to start. Um, and traditionally, accessibility has often been viewed as a, an issue only related to those with a physical disability. However, I think we all know from the, the last couple of days, um, the research has shown that the actual percentage of people who require accessible infrastructure um, is not as many as of those who have hidden disabilities. Um, they may have a learning disability, um, be blind or partially sighted, uh, deaf or hard of hearing. So there's a, a lot of different types of people that you need to consider when you're looking at um, accessible information. Obviously, these are just some of the, some of the, the core groups that you, would, that you would be looking at. Um, supporters who use a wheelchair, supporters with a limited mobility. Um, we're going to concentrate today on partially sighted and blind supporters, hard, hard of hearing and deaf supporters, and supporters with f physiological, intellectual or mental health conditions. <coughs> but it's not just those groups, it's other groups as well. Children, older supporters, senior citizens, um, they may be among your fan base, the most loyal, and have been supporters for 50, 60 plus years. Also, with, the, with our cafe hat on, um, you may have people who are coming from different countries for European games, who may not be aware of the local language, um, who, who may not understand signs. <coughs> so all supporters have a right to information that is publicly available. Accurate information is important uh, and as a disabled person myself I need to know the good and the bad. There are various solutions out there and I'm going to talk a few about a few of these today just to give you a quick example of some of the issues that are there. First one is hearing, hearing augmentation systems um, for those that are deaf and past the um, hard of hearing. Public address systems, you know, one of the systems there is that you can actually increase the number of speakers in a stadium, which would allow you to actually reduce the volume, and, but also increase the clarity. So that's something that you can do um, to, to obviously aid there. There are assistive hearing devices, um, FM loops or audio induction loops for those that use um, hearing aids. Passive infrared emitters, which are, tend to be used more indoors than outdoors because the, um, the infrared gets affected by the uh, daylight, um, but they obviously assist in augmentation. Captioning on video screens um, is very important as well. And also warning systems. Um, a lot of deaf and um, hard of hearing supporters will, in the first instance, follow stewards and um, the rest of the supporter groups um, when there's an emergency situation. But there may come a point when they would need their own special systems in terms of um, visual <coughs> warning systems, um, systems onto the, um, warning the TV screens and that sort of thing as well. Again, we have accessible formats. We have language support professionals, sign language interpreters. Um, as you see today, we have people providing international sign language. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that that is a little bit different to British Sign Language and other languages in other different countries. So you need to be aware who your audience is and what type of uh, version of the sign language they would need. Deaf-blind communications and guides. These are obviously a, a specialist area that you may need to consider. Lip speakers, note takers, and obviously speech to text reporters. Um, these are all things that will aid communication and understanding. In terms of the written format, we have um, Braille for blind and partially sighted people. Um, I'm sure you probably have heard of Braille before, um, but it's a tactile writing language made, made using a series of raised dots. Um, it was, I believe, introduced over 200 years ago and invented by a French schoolboy. Um, called Louis Braille. Um, but although there's only a small number of people who are blind and partially sighted who use Braille, 
one of the things that we, we in the UK need to do is to be aware that those issues may be required. So you have to have an awareness and be able to produce information and literature in Braille if required. Um, may not be something you have to do up front, but obviously you need to be aware of how to do it if you're asked for it. Again, Braille is used, has a, a slightly different language between the UK and European and international versions, so you need to be aware of what your users and what your customers will, will require. A large print version of information um, is obviously helpful as well. Um, many people are unable to read standard print. Um, we've all seen from some of the leaflets that football clubs produce that they are actually quite difficult to read, quite small text. Um, but it's, it's, it's helpful not only for people with poor vision, but people who've got dyslexia, for example, um, age-related sight loss, and if you've got large print or ability to produce large print, then it provides an open access for more people. Obviously, the, the way things are moving on with technology at the moment, we have a, a larger number of things that are done by eDocs. Um, obviously, the Premier League this morning talked about their eDoc for their uh, access officers. Um, but these are, you know, if you haven't seen these before, they're often in different formats, PDF, RTF, uh, Microsoft Word documents. Um, but what th the benefit of these systems is that you, it allows the end user to actually access that information at home via their own systems. So it might be something that you need to be aware of um, and provide some of the information in its plain original formats so that the user can actually open up a Word document rather than something that may not be easy to be read, like a PDF document. Easy Read is also a useful format, tends to be used for people with learning difficulties and disabilities. Um, text is edited to simplify it, and added explanations for any complex words are added or omitted. Uh, also uses pictures and illustrations to assist the understanding of each paragraph or sentence. Easy read documents are often accompanied by a audio CD or cassette. Um, which contains instructions as well. So, for example, it may say something at the end of a section, turn over now. Um, so it helps aid in understanding. Uh, <laughs> sign language, um, again, is something that we are recommending that clubs start to look at and consider on video equipment and video um, services that they provide. Something that can be added after the event um, also, the same as adding subtitles and captioning to match highlights and uh, interviews that go onto the website. Talking of websites, they're often the very first point of contact with your supporter group. Um, everybody accesses the internet in different ways. Um, a lot of disabled people have different systems and different access requirements. They may use um, screen reading software. Um, or they may use um, enhanced facilities as well. So it's, it's important to make sure your information on your website is accurate, is clear, um, but also get your local supporter group involved in that, reviewing that website, find out if there are any problems. Um, there are various codes of practice out there in terms of how a website should be accessible, um, but obviously try and have your supporters involved in that process so that you can work out the best way forward. So I'd just like to leave you with a quick summary. Um, providing inclusive services is not always difficult. It's not necessarily expensive either. A lot of it is very cheap. Um, and you can just provide it very simply. Think of providing such services as you would any other customer. Um, so for example, if you would provide something for a support from a different country, then just treat your own supporters with a disability in the same way. I think it's really important to get local users involved in testing your services and asking what they feel, give them some feedback on what's there. Um, if they're not around local supporters, you've obviously got a, local, a number of local organisations um, and national organisations like CAFE or Level Play and Field that can help. Um, if you need any more information about those sort of things, <laughs> and obviously my details are on the screen, um, and hopefully, uh, as they any questions you have afterwards, I'm, I'm around to answer them. Thank you. Thank you.